The most powerful tone exercise I've developed centers around playing low B flat by using the full tube of the... Not yet. By using the full tube of the instrument, we actually train ourselves to calibrate our embouchure to low B flat and our air... I swear to God, Chris, I'm going... Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace. And if you're interested in saxophone master classes and product reviews, please do subscribe and be sure to hit the like button to hear a beautiful low B flat. Good man. Now today we're talking about exercise zero. Now this is a exercise I developed for myself and my students that centers around low B flat, a note we often seem to forget about we have on our saxophones for a number of reasons we'll cover but it's an exercise that really can transform your sound. Now, the word transform gets used a lot in online education, but this really is transformative. Once students get over the complaining and the petulant outbursts, I find they actually start to love this exercise, crave this exercise, and see what it really can do for the playing. I think you're gonna agree. But first things first, you need to download the exercise. It's included in my saxophone fundamentals book, my free gift to you. The only payment is a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, and coffee. So go ahead and download it from the link, and all the exercises we're using today will be in the Saxophone Fundamentals book. So there are many aspects to this exercise. It's deceivingly simple, but in essence, what we're gonna do is two things. Number one, sound low B flat. <laughs> And number two, carry that sensation through the entire register of the instrument by climbing the register while maintaining the same feeling of playing low B flat. Seems simple enough, but like many things in life, the simple can be surprisingly complex, like the Japanese concept of shibui, where there's a beautiful elegance in the simplicity. Easy to start doing this exercise takes a lifetime to master. I assume, I haven't mastered it yet. So let's start with part one of this exercise, sounding a low, full, big, beautiful B flat. Now this is actually somewhat of a Trojan horse. We've hidden some other goodies inside, like parents that hide vegetables in a casserole so their kids will actually eat them. In playing low B flat, we're not only addressing playing low B flat, but we're hitting the embouchure, our airstream, voicing, and also ergonomics. There's a lot of things that have to come together to do this exercise correctly, so let's break it down. But in essence, what I want you to think of when doing this exercise, part one is set, breathe, and focus. Part one, set, we're going to remove variables. So before we start playing low B flat, before we make sound, we're actually going to finger the note low B flat. Now you may be thinking, well, of course I have to finger low B flat, this is silly. It's actually not. Doing it before we start playing is something you might find yourself not actually doing. I'm surprised by how many students start to finger the note while they start playing, which as you can see is inefficient, leaves room for all kinds of errors. Second, we set our top teeth on top of the mouthpiece, resting the weight of the head on top of the mouthpiece, and we set our left thumb on the thumb rest. Now the top teeth and the left thumb are the two points of stabilization for the instrument, the next strap relieves the weight, but we do not use the right thumb for really anything other than resting. If you're gripping the thumb rest with your right thumb, it's gonna cause tension, a lot of problems. Top teeth, left thumb are the resting stabilization points. And then we finger low B flat, and then we have a stable set instrument, which removes excess motion. Because if you go to play low B flat and you start to set your embouchure, your fingers and blow all at the same time, it's kind of like trying to thread a needle while you're tumbling down a flight of steps. It's highly inefficient, and it also leaves a lot of variables that we have to diagnose later. So step one of playing low B flat, we set. Set the fingers, set the teeth, get ready to play, remove excess motion. Then you're ready for a big, beautiful low B flat. Step two, breathe. Breath is all critically important, as the Zen masters and yogis of yesteryear will tell you. Now, it's obviously critical to playing the saxophone because our entire sound is a vibrating column of air. So if we don't breathe, we don't have... You get the idea. 
Now, the saxophone has somewhat to do with the shaping of our tone, but it's largely a megaphone for the tone that's already created in our mouth and our mouthpiece. We just kind of amplify it and shape the sound a little bit with our saxophone. The airstream is everything. So breathing and blowing, both important to playing the saxophone, it warrants a video all into itself, which we'll cover at a later date. But right now, just a couple of quick things to think about for taking a big breath and sending it through your instrument. Number one, you have to relax the body. Think of letting your shoulders just shimmy a little with me, shimmy. Don't make it weird, don't make it weird, just shimmy. All right, let your shoulders fall away from your ears and when you breathe, pull your tummy out. Yes, I'm a grown man that says tummy. So we pull the tummy out, which lets the lungs expand downward. If you're tense, we don't have that room for expansion. So when we breathe, we have to breathe with a relaxed body. Secondly, and this is just the Cliff Notes version, when we blow, we tense the tummy muscles, the abdominal muscles, like you're doing a crunch or a sit up. And that is our method of forced exhalation. Relax on the in-breath, tense the tummy muscles for a forced exhalation. Now, this is also really important. When we breathe, we breathe through the corners of our mouth. As we set our embouchure, we want to leave the main focus of our top teeth and our lower cushioned lip in place when we breathe, not move them. So I don't want to see hatchback head as we breathe in. Highly inefficient, and you're then breaking up your embouchure while you breathe. So breathe through the corners of your mouth, not your nose. No one wants to hear that. Finally, step three is focus. We focus our embouchure and our air, sending a low, beautiful B flat out the bell of our horn. So focus the embouchure by, after you're breathing, bringing it in the corners of your mouth and contracting your tummy muscles with a forced exhalation, sending that low B flat into the universe, making us all a little bit happier in the process and your neighbors a little bit more upset. Now, once we play that low B flat and hold it, we don't just accept whatever comes out. I'm not your therapist. We're not here to accept what is. We're here to make it better. And we do that through the power of voicing by shaping our oral cavity through vowel shapes. We can actually really change the timbre and the color of our tone. For instance, play a low B flat, then change an E, A, A, O, U. Change those vowel shapes with your mouth while you're playing low B flat and listen to the changes of timbre or tone color while you do it. Listen one more time, see if you can hear the difference between A, E, I, O, O, while I'm playing. All I'm doing is moving my tongue, consciously what I'm thinking about is moving my tongue to make vowel shapes, but other things are moving as well. So while we are shaping that low B flat with our voicing, we're actually making micro adjustments to our embouchure and our throat, the forbidden zone. We don't talk about the throat for a number of good reasons. We change those as we change our voicing, and here's why. It's fallacious to think we are isolating these things and addressing them one by one, and they have no relation to each other. They are highly interconnected. Now, let me demonstrate. Say the syllable E. Say it. No, I'm seriously, do it, do it. Okay, yeah, E. Now, change E into an OO, but don't move your lips or your embouchure. So say E, not change it into an OO, but again, don't move your embouchure. Try it. Did you hurt yourself? I tried to warn you. It's interconnected. As we change the vowel shapes in our mouth, our embouchure changes as well. The lip pressure, the shaping of it, because that's how we speak. That's how the mouth works. Also, as we change vowel sounds, 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 vowel sounds, vowel sounds, our soft palate is going to move as well, as well as our throat. Now, I don't want you thinking about or trying to adjust your throat, and here's why. Through scientific research and endoscopic cameras and nerdy academic studies, we have found that players are really bad at shaping their own throats or realizing what they're doing. They think they're opening, but they're actually constricting. And the baseline is, they end up making over-exaggerated motions in their throat, which causes tension and most likely worse tone. And I know some people that have caused some real strain and injuries with their throat, trying to focus on manipulating their 
larynx, and glottis. Let those things relax. If you shape the vowel sounds with your tongue, those things are going to move automatically and with the least motion necessary, and you won't end up hurting yourself. So when we change our voicing, many other things change. It's an interconnected sound change, chain, sound chain. It's difficult to speak this early in the morning. It's an interconnected sound chain, but we are very good at controlling vowel sounds because that's talking. We've been doing it mostly our whole lives. <laughs> Now, once you have the big, beautiful, low B flat exercise zero, we move on to the variations part two of this exercise. We climb higher in range, always returning to the low B flat. And as we play higher and higher, we maintain the sensation, the air, the embouchure, the relaxation of playing that low B flat. So we're gonna go higher, slurring back down to low B flat, but always feel like we're playing the low B flat. <laughs> As you climb higher, your tendency is going to be tense up. We have this thinking that as we go higher, we need to be firmer because we're afraid of what if the high notes don't come out correctly. Don't worry about it. Let the airstream do the work. Trust in your airstream. So as we climb higher in the registers, we stay relaxed, pretending like we're playing low B flat. So in reality, if I'm playing even the palm keys, a singing melody up there, and someone were to sneak behind me and close all my keys, Low B flat should sound with me just moving my tongue a little bit. I'm voicing up there, so if they fingered low B flat, I would get an overtone, but I shouldn't have to drop my jaw or drastically change the nature of my embouchure to get low B flat out, even when I'm playing the palm keys or altissimo. The basics of the embouchure and the relaxation should stay the same. Now, this is a power curative for bad tone. It's also a powerful diagnostic tool in doing this exercise. Here's what I mean. While you're playing, you might think, man, this tone is rather thin. The cats aren't gonna dig this tone. This note doesn't sound good, I'm feeling tense. Stop, play exercise zero, or better yet, while you're playing something else in the middle of a phrase. Pop all your fingers down and see, can you get low B flat out? If you have to make drastic changes to your embouchure to get low B flat out, then you know you've become tense and you're constricting your tone while you play. It happens to the best of us. Not me, but many of you. It'll happen. You tense up as you play and you have to remind yourself, ah, I need to relax, use more air. So maybe intersperse just a moment of exercise zero while you're practicing to zero in, reset the embouchure in the air when you're playing in whatever register, whatever music you're playing. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind when doing this exercise. Number one, if you're consistently not getting out the low B flat or comes out after a thaw, a pause, it's likely due to articulation, an inefficient tongue motion, too much tongue in the reed or the tongue getting in the way. You can isolate and see if that's the problem by just doing a breath attack. So turn that thaw into a ho and see if it comes out. And if it works with just a clean breath attack, then you know your articulation needs to be modified. That's another video altogether. Number two, remain relaxed when you're doing this exercise. It's not hard. Don't think of it as hard. It's simply unfamiliar. So while you're playing low B flat, realize these springs are not that tough. We simply rest our fingers on the key. That will close the low B flat, and then we blow. If you find your shoulders creeping up or you're doing the classical saxophonist chicken wing with your elbow, relax. Relaxation is key to playing the saxophone. This is not a difficult instrument to play physically. It takes very little effort. So let's remain relaxed while we do it. Life is hard enough. Stress about other things, not the saxophone. Number three, finger efficiency, keeping the fingers resting on the pearls. We don't want the itsy bitsy spider crawling up the selmer. We want to keep our fingers resting, 
pressing, relaxing, pressing, relaxing, keeping them resting on the pearls more or less the best you can the entire time. If you see flying fingers, stop and reset and remind yourself of finger efficiency. It will help every other aspect of your playing. Now it's time for frequently asked questions that I get online and from my students when they start doing exercise zero. Question number one, what if I can't get out the low B flat? I have leaks in my horn. Get it fixed. Question number two, my berry has a low A. Should I finger low A? Should I start this exercise on low A? So I'm using the full tube of the, we get it. You have a baritone saxophone, good for you. I'm a little jealous I don't have a baritone saxophone. So if you're a saxophone company that needs a review of a baritone saxophone, send it to me, Wally Wallace, PO Box 2455. Next question. It's loud and my family hates it. Art requires suffering. Just not always our suffering. Someone's gotta suffer and tell them to suck it up. It's important. The giant paychecks you'll get as a saxophone <laughs> will make it worthwhile. Question number four. How often do I have to do this and for how long? Easy. Every day for the rest of your life. Now, I will see you next week with a more jazz-related lesson as we dive deeper into style and all sorts of fun things with jazz language. So as always, I will see you very soon. But in the meantime, go for... Motherfucker.